you've probably heard about ocean acidification. The ocean is becoming more acidic year after year, causing tremendous levels of damage to marine environments and the organisms that live there. But what is the cause of ocean acidification? What effects does it have and why does it matter? The answers to these questions are rooted in chemical reactions that take place in seawater. So a review of carbonate chemistry and acids and bases seems like a good place to start. In the field of chemistry, there are a variety of different definitions for acids and bases. The definition that you are probably most familiar with was proposed in the 1800s by a Swedish scientist named Svant August Arrhenius. Among other achievements, Arrhenius was the first to use basic principles of physical chemistry to estimate the effect of carbon pollution on Earth's surface temperature. In 1896, he concluded that human caused carbon dioxide emissions from burning fossil fuels were sufficient to cause global warming through a process known as the greenhouse effect, in which gases like carbon dioxide effectively trap solar radiation inside the Earth's atmosphere rather than allowing them to escape into space. History has shown that while Arrhenius did not have all the answers, his work was well ahead of its time. In fact, his work is now considered one of the pillars of modern climate science. But that's a topic for a different day. According to Arrhenius, an acid is a chemical substance that undergoes a special type of reaction in the presence of water. When you add acid to water, it disassociates and releases hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions do not exist as free species in aqueous solutions. Instead, they react with water to form hydronium ions. Similarly, according to Arrhenius, a base is a substance that disassociates in water and releases hydroxide ions. These ions do exist as free species in water. Importantly, it is the relative amounts of the acids and bases that affect the pH of water. The pH of the ocean, or any other aqueous solution for that matter, is based on the concentration of hydrogen and hydronium ions in the solution. Because hydrogen and hydronium ions react with hydroxide ions to form water, you can only have one or the other in abundance. All of the ions of the one group react with those of the other, leaving only one group left in abundance. You will either have a lot of hydroxide ions left over, or you will have many hydrogen ions. pH is measured on a scale from 0 to 14. If a solution is acidic, it has an excess of hydrogen and hydronium ions, and therefore a pH less than 7. The most abundant acid in natural waters is carbonic acid. It is the most important acid in the ocean, where it is not artificial. Carbonic acid occurs naturally in the ocean as a consequence of the ocean's relationship with the atmosphere. Most of the atmosphere that envelops our planet consists of two gases. 
nitrogen gas represents about 78% of our atmosphere. Oxygen gas represents another 21% or so. The remaining 1% of our atmosphere consists of trace gases like argon, methane, and carbon dioxide. These gases diffuse into the ocean and get dissolved in the water. When carbon dioxide gets dissolved in seawater, it reacts with water to form carbonic acid. As an acid, this chemical disassociates releasing hydrogen ions along with bicarbonate and carbonate ions. Overall, human activities such as burning of fossil fuels adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. As the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere increases, so does the amount of carbon dioxide dissolved in the ocean leading to more carbonic acid and more hydrogen ions. Currently, the pH of the ocean is about 8.1. The ocean is basic or alkaline. But as a consequence of carbon emissions, the pH of the ocean is slowly dropping over time and becoming more acidic. It's actually very hard to predict how much ocean pH will change as a result of human activities. The reason is because the ocean is buffered against large changes in pH. A buffer is any aqueous solution that resists a change in pH. The ocean is a buffer. It does not want to change pH. The chemistry of its water helps it to prevent and resist large fluctuations in pH over time. Why and how? Do you remember how the disassociation of carbonic acid in water produces bicarbonate and carbonate ions? This is because carbonic acid is a weak acid rather than a strong acid. When a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, is added to water, it fully and completely disassociates in one step, producing hydrogen ions and a conjugate base. Carbonic acid, however, is a weak acid. It does not fully disassociate in one step. A weak acid is an acid that disassociates in multiple steps. Carbonic acid first disassociates into bicarbonate, which is also a weak acid. It can then further disassociate to produce carbonate and hydrogen ions. However, note that these reactions are reversible. They go both ways. Carbonate can react with hydrogen ions to produce bicarbonate, which in turn can produce carbonic acid. In this context, the pH of the ocean depends on the concentrations of the three carbon species and their balance or equilibrium. The chemistry of this equilibrium is too complex to cover in a short video, but suffice it to say, that the concentrations of these three species dictate the pH of the ocean. Under the current conditions, bicarbonate ions are favored over carbonate ions and carbonic acid. However, even though the ocean is buffered against pH change, continuing carbon emissions will continue to increase the concentration of carbonic acid in the ocean and drive ocean acidification over time. Indeed, there has already been a significant amount of ocean acidification over the past few years. 
Some of the clearest evidence of ocean acidification comes from research on coral reefs. Coral are colonial animals that live in groups or colonies. Each individual animal is microscopic and has a simple body plan. This body plan is based around tentacles surrounding a central cavity with a mouth and digestive system. Each individual animal lives in a box, extending these tentacles out of the box and into the water in order to feed. The boxes are called coralites, and they are incredibly solid, hard, and durable because they consist of calcium carbonates in the form of minerals like calcite and aragonite. Corals produce these coralites and minerals by extracting ions and organic elements and other chemicals out of the water that surrounds them. Their tissues then control the reaction of these chemical species to produce the minerals. We call this process biomineralization. Biomineralizing organisms are capable of producing other minerals as well, but calcite and aragonite are by far the most common minerals produced by life forms, particularly animals. Biomineralizing animals contribute to the formation of limestone, a sedimentary rock that mainly or entirely consists of calcite. Indeed, it is accurate to say that coral reefs consist of limestone. They are limestone. Coral reefs are simply limestone covered by a thin layer of animals. These reef limestones paint a concerning picture about ocean acidification. Reefs that were once large, healthy communities of coral and other organisms in the past are now starting to break down and disappear entirely. This is a direct consequence of ocean acidification. Calcium carbonate, regardless of its form, is unstable in an acidic solution where it will eventually be destroyed as it is dissolved back into calcium and bicarbonate. In a recent study, researchers from the University of Miami found that the limestones of many coral reefs are dissolving during the fall and winter months in the Florida Keys. Corals form new limestone during the spring and summer, but year by year, the losses outpace the gains. Reefs in the Florida Keys have been more strongly affected by ocean acidification than other reef environments because the pH of the ocean is not uniform. It's heterogeneous, and it varies across the surface of our planet pH levels are particularly low or acidic in the Florida Keys. In any case, if things continue as they are in places like the Florida Keys, these reefs may disappear entirely. It is important to recognize that ocean acidification will not only affect reefs, but the ocean as a whole. Many ocean animals, and virtually all animals that produce seashells, make their shells out of calcite or aragonite. It is expected that ocean acidification will affect these shells in much the same way that it affects corals. The calcium carbonate will be dissolved and organisms will struggle to repair and maintain their carbonate shells. This trend could ultimately cause many life forms to start producing deformed shells 
and potentially go extinct and disappear forever. If the story of ocean acidification teaches us one thing, it's this. The formation of carbonate rock on our planet is innately tied to water chemistry and life. Limestones are only deposited in environments with the right chemical and biological conditions. Generally speaking, this means environments where there are high concentrations of carbonate and bicarbonate and low acidity or high pH. It means that carbonate rocks are generally deposited in environments that get lots of sunlight and nutrients and host diverse communities of carbonate secreting biomineralizing animals which produce skeletons and shells made out of calcite and aragonite. Today, you generally find these environments located in shallow tropical seas with warm waters and quiet, low energy fluid dynamics. Carbonate deposition is particularly favored in environments where there is no lithogenous sediment to dilute the carbonate material. Instead, you have lots of hydrogenous carbonate mud sediment, as well as lots of calcareous bioclasts produced by biomineralizing animals. As we continue our journey and begin looking at the various types of carbonate rocks that are possible, I challenge you to begin thinking about the roles that specific environmental conditions affecting water chemistry and the organisms may have played in the formation of rocks like this one. Life and chemistry are really the keys to understanding most carbonate depositional environments.